God damn. Man, how many times is Barnes gonna send us out on patrol? A la verga, wey. You know what? One of these days he's gonna step on a Claymore on accident. Dude, I love that idea. You know, they just don't give you a freaking break. You got one week left before you go home. No, go on patrol. Go on patrol. Oh, Mister, my name is Luis. I would love to go on patrol. Right. I don't want to go see my girlfriend at home. Jody's keeping her nice and warm. Dude, she's hot though. Bro. She is hot though. GI Bill, huh? <laughs> Shit ain't worth it, man. I gotta tell you. Like I'm gonna go to college. I can barely read. Man, I just want to get. <laughs> listen to some Jimmy. You know what I'm saying? By the way, best artist ever. So. I don't know about Jimmy, but. What, I, what, you into the Beatles or of something? Of course it's the Beatles, bro. What, with potion number nine? 100%. Hey, shh. What is going on? Oh, what the hell? All right, boys, what do we got? Who are you? I'm from the future. How does your gun look the same? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Hey! We gotta retreat. Don't worry about it. I'm gonna make sure you make it. Dude, don't leave me with Barnes, man. It's gonna be fine. Don't leave me with Barnes. And remember kids, it's LARPing until it's not. Hello, and welcome to the Retro Rifle Hour, brought to you by M81, God's Plaid, and those sweet, sweet carry handle things. Today, we're gonna to be talking about some old school cool and why it still works. But first, a word from our sponsors. Hey friend, it's dark half the time on this planet. Unless you've got magic powers or a mountain of carrots, you're going to need TMVC to see at nighttime the right way. This is probably the hardest I've LARPed in the last two or three weeks. Um, uh, Brownell sent this out, some retro uppers options to make re like pretty accurate retro builds here. Uh, you have a 20 inch uh, version here, upper, and then you have an 11.5 version here that's kind of more the Colt Commando size. Uh, we did some super accurate stuff some of these rebuilds, and we took some liberties with others. Uh, we watch movies and have fun just like everybody else. Hey, Brew. I get it more now. Um, when we started, when we got these in, I went and deep dove in the forums, and that went way deeper than I thought it would. Uh, if you really want a cool conversation, go check those guys out. They have really, really cool, I'll tell you, like 80-page threads on oh, yeah. why they made these decisions and which engineer was responsible for like the kind of floaty rear yep. sight versus the fit on the A1, right? So we'll start We'll start with the shorty, right? Yep. So th it's an 11.5 uh, Brownells upper. Uh, it has the, a and this is probably more Colt correct or correct for the Colt Commando in that it has an A1 style carry handle uh, on a, just it was a shorter, they were probably starting to run the A2, A3s at this time. But we actually put them side by side on a Unity mount. Mm -hmm. And it was almost imperceivable how, how small the difference was in like where your cheek is going to be. Right, exactly. Your, your like semi chin weld that I you would get. I mean, it, it, it is higher. Yeah. yeah. But the funny thing is because if you run it enough mm -hmm. or you're running risers enough, it's just comfortable. It's, it's yeah. just, it, it feels right at home. This has got a little peep through sight. I think Lou Pold and a couple people make these adapters for them. You just simply lower your chin a bit and actually have a cheek weld. And now you have proper irons, nice iron sights for that matter. Mm -hmm. And even for how short, this is a carbine length gas system, even with how short that is, uh, you have a very good, solid, usable sight picture. 
that you can easily take out to 150 or 200 yards if you really needed to. It'd yeah. be better to have the red dot for that, oh, yeah, but like you're capable with that. That was probably... All the dudes who did uh, marksmanship training in the military with iron sights are roasting the shit out of us right now. <laughs> yeah, and like, that's okay, because yeah. let's be real, you got to know how the fundamentals work, yeah. and everyone who wants to jump to a red dot because it's easier. The, the battery of arms are completely identical. Most issued stuff, or even stuff that you're buying, most lower parts kits are going to look identical to that as far as your safety selector. Your bolt release. Uh, these have that has the cool teardrop. Yeah, I was about to say the Ford Assist might assist. be one of the uh, changes on there. I know you could probably find one from someone on there, but this does have just that certain aesthetic appeal that makes so, me some, happy. Someone in the comment section, please explain to me why. There are some cases where if it's not going in, forcing it in it yeah. may not be the best course of action. Sure, 100%. But if you're going to load your Weapon in a hey, we just got off the beach, or I need to load it quietly f format. You're, you're using slowly get it in there yep. and then push finish. That's why that indention in on the bolt exists or the Ford assist. We put more stuff on this, so it ended up getting heavier because we ended up aiming, adding the aim point. Uh, we ended up, uh, we found an LZ mount. This tells you how mm -hmm. <laughs> it's plastic, so obviously, there's you know the yeah, constraints you got that, that you would understand. If you got that real hot, I'd be interested to see how it held up, but for just holding a flashlight, yeah, I'd take yeah. that over a hose clamp. You know, I'd take that over, depending on where you're putting it and where you're mounting it. Screwing you know I mean? in a little bit of hose clamp, a little bit of 100 mile an hour tape, <laughs> and, you know, we could probably make it work. But it's fascinating. I mean, and, and even in the way that we kind of had to hook up the sling, yeah, I literally tied it through the front sight post. This is how modifications were made back then before Magpul yeah, and everyone People had exists. to figure it out, right? Yeah. Like uh, what's identical between these two is the handguards. These, these are more akin to A2 handguards. You had the triangle, like the OG handguards, and then they went to these for decades. Yeah, the A1, I think, is the only one that actually had the triangle handguards, yeah. had the uh, the not a wire cutter muzzle device as well. Yeah, the, these, what's interesting and what a lot of people sleep on these, it, it, are they dated? Yes. Uh, there's a lot of free floating handguards that do great, and we even have now some mm -hmm. that have heat shielding integrated if you look at the yeah. MFR. But these did have heat shielding in them because the, uh, especially under high volume of fire, these do get very hot. This was actually really nice. Okay. I think even in handling, you get your little Chris Costa C-clamp grip on it. It was a really nice... Big in Japan. Uh, it was a really nice, uh, pleasant uh, handguard, actually, for what it is. Yeah. And lightweight. Right? Yeah. Like when Dude. we picked this up, I'm like, this is a 20 inch rifle. And, and, and we see so many manufacturers like, oh, this is lightweight, lightweight, lightweight. You're like, man, this yeah. thing's Huga. You don't know. And what it's lightweight crazy is. lightweight, right? Because <laughs> you're not adding all that. Uh, the, I all mean, the that is set up as Saint Stoner intended with yeah. the full length, barrel length, full length gas system. You're getting the most out of that round, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think um, also, and you, you have to look at, like, I, I, I was issued a Colt. Um, and so which it's not a guys, it's not a guys who trigger. That was one of the things that we complained about specifically with this. This is like the cheapest no spec stuff we could throw in yeah. there. Mm -hmm. uh, the trigger did leave something to be desired, but that one, that, that is a Colt lower. Um, that's a very used in Colt lower. Um, you don't notice it as much. I was really surprised at how pleasant it was when you were used to the really expensive bougie BCM right. guns and stuff like that. Even with it being me assembled, um, like this was pretty cop gunsmithing aside. <laughs> yeah, it, it was it was a really pleasant rifle to shoot. Uh, that doesn't have the A2 pistol grip like this one does. Uh, that's got a Magpul pistol grip. It's not clone correct. It's not so a clone. You can yell at us, but um, it, it was comfortable. I totally get why the guys that had these issued to them preferred the shorter one. For sure. I know a lot of guys. I I don't know anything of the Delta Force operators. The, the second you start talking about vehicles and structures, that barrel yeah. length is oh, not yeah, ideal. That's, that would yeah. be unwieldy. Granted, uh -huh. there's a whole bunch of war dogs that did a real good job of it in Fallujah and other yeah. places. Like uh, a lot of CQB has happened with a 20 inch so, rifle. Yeah, with a red dot and a flashlight. I almost don't miss modern rifles altogether. No, dude, that guy. this it thing it does wild. it for yeah. me in all aspects, except for I can't put a magnifier on there. I'm sure one of y'all on the forums has figured out how to run a magnifier or an LPVO on one of these. If you did, more power to <laughs> you. You are, you are much more motivated than I am. But it is the basic setup of a rifle that you yeah. everything you need, nothing you don't. Obviously, it's not night vision setup. Again, you can figure that out. You might have some laser you know, uh, zero issues. Something later, but yeah. yeah, some laser zeroing. You might want to swap out to a Magpul handguard or whatever. But again, it's not necessarily going to have to be clone. You can upgrade it to fit your needs. But it's still a reliable, lightweight carbine. Yeah. Um, the, the these can be, I'm sure, a bit over gas. The, the carbine length gas system was designed to be reliable. This 20 incher, um, and we even did a short about this. Um, is kind of scary. 
Like I, I, I finally understood fear for a plastic rifle on this thing. That I was like, <laughs> dude, oh, that yeah. one nine three going out of that bad boy, That's or some of the other military rifle, loads. Dude. Like, yeah. it is just the being able to see the difference in like shooting the steel and right. then shooting the steel and being like, oh, there's some uh, some craters on that thing now. Significant velocity difference in between the two rifles. Um, yeah, and then it's still really lightweight. I do like the fixed stock. Mm -hmm. uh, I have pretty long arms, uh, and so the the length of pull didn't bother me. I could see why. This back swept A2 pistol grip was wanted in this, especially if you were smaller statured, like good luck with that length of pull. These are still capable rifles, right? Uh -huh. There are some limitations just based on things have upgraded a lot, right? We did a review on the MFR recently, that uh, modern fighting rifle, that MFR. And honestly, <laughs> it's neat to see how many features can really be worked into modern rifles, it's right? It's a significant amount of features. Yeah, too, I mean... So. Ambi stuff, dual extractors, um, the Bolt. coating that's not IR glowy, right? <laughs> Special <laughs> bolts, handguards that had heat shields and uh, M lock yeah. slots. I, like, there's I, a lot of changes. I, I think, too, if you look at the integration of suppressors and then when night vision became something that was like unit serviceable, it wasn't yeah. like a highly niche thing, having a different way of aiming that wasn't looking down a set of sights, but actually utilizing a laser, trying to do all that other kind of stuff. It made certain requirements, not to mention actual pinpoint accuracy when these went from being shoot at the thing over there to get it to stop shooting at me to like, I now have to take a very pinpoint shot. Uh, I will say, so to get more specific, if you're interested in doing builds like this, the short guy here is the uh, Brownells 773C7, so it's an 11.5 upper. It comes complete with a BCG and your charging handle. Um, I know on that one, they went with a thinner profile barrel because that was like... That's what the Colt Commandos yeah. did, or the the Car 15s would do. Um, versus this guy is a it's like a medium profile, but you can kind of see it as a thick boy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not heavy, but it is thick. Dude, rifle length gas on a gun this size super so nice. easy. This is just a step up. It's a loud 22. That's what it feels like. This is cool. This is super cool. And running around with your either your 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 blood diamond or your, your heat gun. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah, like. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it. it I, think it's I, I think all of us, right? If you look at the gun wall, we 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 get a bunch of different guns. Why? Because it's different. It's cool. Yeah. We like to have variety. Uh, this is a bit of variety. I'd like to have in my collection because it's freaking awesome. Yep. I you think know? this also separates you a bit from Gen Z. <laughs> yeah. I think like if you're if you're like a kid of the '80s or the '90s and you grew up with like yeah. Black Hawk Down and movies like that, this immediately goes to this very iconic. A generation that we were a product from. All of our service members that came out of GWAT or even before that, if you look back on stuff like oh, yeah. that happened in Mogadishu and all that, this I mean, is go, what they were Go running. look at old school ARFCOM logos, right? Like This, Dude, is, this, this is what is you what, saw. Yeah, you didn't you have lame raising modules and red dots and optics and, so, and bipods and everything else sitting on them. You know what I mean? I think this is a really cool uh, experience. Like I said, try to have fun with this. Uh, try not to take yourself super serious. Like, like, like all things, you're only going to be as good as your training and experience will allow you to be, so you might as well have fun while you do it. Preach it. Um, while you do that, go ahead and support our sponsors, and more than anything, support the companies that support your Second Amendment right, because without that, uh, none of this conversation happens. You guys can follow this channel by subscribing to it and liking on this video, as well as the news. We cover a lot of really cool stuff with Andrew. We do. You can also check us out on all of the socials at AR15.com, as well as for the more adventurous, you can go to our Discord, or the even more adventurous, the forums themselves, <laughs> at AR15.com. And remember, kids, it's a republic if you can keep it, and it's all LARPing until it's not.